We've got a problem, Glyn. We've got a crisis, I think. We have, or you have? No, we. We. We? What? Why, Definitely what? we, yeah. And our, our, cre- our credibility, if we have any left, is, is at risk. Oh. Um, oh. Well, I, I was doing the research for, for today's podcast yesterday. Um, as you know, I did a little bit of homework. Yeah. And uh, I was researching something about the walk that we're going to talk about. And uh, I thought, oh, I'd not noticed that before. So I Googled it. And the first two returns, you know, numbers one and two, the first reference material that Google was pointing me to, was Hidden Wiltshire. So it, we're marking our own homework, in effect. <laughs> and, and bearing in mind, we just talk complete shit and we make stuff up. That's very, very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just swore as well. I'm going to have to bleep oh, oh, yes. Sorry. That's uh, that's another another quid in the, the swear box. Exactly. But uh, yeah, this is this is not good. People are taking us too seriously. <laughs> well, Google is. <laughs> well, Google is. Yes. Welcome to another Hidden Wiltshire podcast. This is podcast 19. And, oh, sorry, I just have to start again because I've just looked at my, <laughs> I've got my Word document up with your itinerary on and it says episode 19, the coffin trail running all t- <laughs> Oh, <laughs> So I was totally thrown by that. So I was just going to say, episode 19, the coffin trail. I'm like, no, we did that last time. <laughs> anyway, right. So welcome to another Hidden Wiltshire <laughs> They, actually, why, why not just leave that other bit in? <laughs> it's quite funny. <laughs> just, just leave it. Leave it in. Um, but what we can do is jump in there and say, actually, that's no, not the coffin trail at all. It's okay. So we are here at another Hidden Wiltshire podcast, episode nineteen. It's not the coffin trail. That was last time. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll get, we'll get to Beckhampton gallops um, before too long. Um, but I, before I, we do that, I blame the staff. He just can't get the staff these days. I know, I know. Actually, I, I need to, I need to pay better wages. I think, well, you do, or is. some, some would be good. <laughs> <laughs> who, who puts this bloody running audio together anyway? Oh no, hang hmm. on, that's me. <laughs> Let me think about that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness me. Um, okay, um, before we start the podcast, and by the way, oh, we need to do intros, don't we? Mm. My name is Glyn Coy. Um I'm the face and voice behind the Hidden Wiltshire thing. And with me, as always, I have my podcasting partner. Uh, Paul Timlett, the unpaid lackey who just mucks everything up. <laughs> and carries my bags. And carries your bags. <laughs> um, before we get started... This is all going horribly wrong. <laughs> it is. This, this is not very professional. Um, before we get into the main um, topic this week, um, we're going to talk about the last couple of weeks in Wiltshire and just do a bit of a roundup. Yeah. So, something about your aunt's funeral. Yeah, well, actually, this is a fairly sober subject, really, as you would expect from a, a funeral. But um, yeah, I went to went to my aunt's funeral earlier in the week, which was very very touching, and I was very close to my aunt. We were a close family, we were, you know, as, as kids, and we were, myself and my, my cousins were all we, we all grew up together, similar age. So it was it was you know a very touching funeral, and um, I, I just you know as you do, you sit there and you, you're listening to the eulogy, which was read by my my cousins. Very, very talented daughter, um, Hannah, who is a, a doctor of um, child psychology, very talented young lady. And she read this sort of eulogy beautifully. And um, it was written by by her, her aunts, so my cousins. And uh, they were talking, so my, my aunt and uncle were, um, they were together for 76 years and married for 73 years. I mean, can you believe that? Some people don't even live that long. I oh, know. Um, but they were talking about my my aunt's life, and um, she she left school I think when she was fourteen and started as a as a typist in a solicitor's office in in London. And um, this this will resonate with you um, with your legal background. Um, and she was uh, apparently um, when 
the, the I mean, she was she was a very clever woman, um, but left school with you know very few qualifications, and um, she was so good that uh, when her when when her boss, when the solicitor was indisposed in uh, quotation marks, um, she would go to court and basically represent the firm and the client as a typist, <laughs> <laughs> and do it very well. I mean, can you imagine getting away with that these days? Never get away with it these days. It's just extraordinary. Yeah. And, and um, my my uncle, who, bless him, I mean, he's 90, I think he's 95. I mean, God, you know, the just vision of a, a broken man, really, was just so sad. Um, but uh, he was an equally, is an equally talented man, but in, in the war, he flew, he started off as a Navy pilot flying swordfish, you know, the torpedo uh, mm. aircraft, which are made made of sort of balsa wooden string, basically. I mean, horrendous things. Um, but he, he was very lucky. He never actually saw any action. So he was, I think he was flying swordfish, patrolling the, the, the seas off uh, Canada. Uh, and then from there, he went on to be a pilot in um, Catalinas, you know, the flying boats. Yeah, and uh, he spent the rest of the war um, basically bobbing around the Caribbean. So they were a bunch of you know late teens, early twenties guys. And he, he once told me this. That he said it's, it's the best years of his life, which doesn't say a lot from my aunt, I know. But um, you know he was <laughs> flying around the Caribbean, and they'd find a, a nice spot of sort of you know indigo-coloured water, put the ship down, and uh, all pile in the back and have a fry up. Bombing around in the Caribbean Sea whilst the war, you know, horrendous war was being fought across the world, and that was his wow. war. That's that was that's all we saw. Yeah, yeah. But it it, it just struck me. I, I've always been interested in sort of social history, and and I, we, we've become a bit of a, a history podcast. And I saw with horror that you seem to be doing a a lecture at a history society. I mean, do they know what they've booked but, <laughs> or who they booked? They do. They but, do. They're fans of the podcast, actually. <laughs> but. Um, you know, social history has always interested me. I can't stand sort of kings and queens and all that sort of stuff. And I, I've got a terrible memory for dates and things, which is why I was hopeless when I did my legal exams as part of my professional qualifications. I could never remember the days of the the, 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 the names of the case or the dates. So I would just say that there was this case with a snail in a. Oh yeah, I'm, that, that's that, that's my speciality. I have a law degree, you see. So I know. I, I, know. I, I, <laughs> memorize those to death i've uh, learned the names of thousands of cases believe me yeah well, i just i just couldn't do it i'd sit there and cram it and so i'd end up just saying well look, there was this case and you know, i can't remember the date <laughs> i don't know who it was but it was this and it was the same with kings and queens but what's far more interesting is the lives of, of ordinary people and that's my yeah. point about this, this little intro is that the sort of social history and you know who cares about kings and queens and all the rest of it and governments it's it's about sort of real people it is and um, it is and that, that's the thing that gets me is as well when i i'm quite into what people call landscape archaeology yeah and that, that's about you know finding ancient history and prehistory prehistoric stuff in the landscape but but for me it's all about thinking about the people yeah. who were these people that lived there and how did they live and yeah, yeah. how were they interacting with each other it's we don't really know but it's just it's, it's it's good to kind of think about it. And... Yeah, but I think if, you know even people like my my uncle who you know at ninety five bless him you know he's he's you know he's approaching the end of his life, and, and unless we sort of you know capture these people's stories about what life was like, sort of you know he was born in the early nineteen twenties, mid nineteen twenties, and what what was life like when he was a lad and growing up and you know unless we, we sort of capture those stories it's just it's lost forever because it's it's not be written down anywhere but your your comment about um sort of landscape archaeology did you describe it um mm. sort of neatly brings us on to uh the, the, the talk we went to on, on sunday doesn't it yes uh, andrew zeminski yes our favorite stonemason yeah yeah who's now a friend of the podcast because he's been on it <laughs> yes <laughs> and I don't suppose he listens, but he has been on it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we went to see him in uh, is it Toppings, the bookshop. In, Toppings, uh, yeah. In, in, in Bath. Was it Sunday? Yeah, Sunday evening. Sunday wasn't night, it? yeah. yeah. And uh, he was just riveting, absolutely fascinating. And what, what struck me was he, he obviously had done about as much preparation for that talk as we do for this podcast. Because <laughs> after about five minutes, he looked at the 
the, 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 the lady who was sort of hosting for topics and said, um, is that it? Can I stop now? <laughs> and, and he just started. But uh, he, he, he'd obviously done no preparation, but it was just fantastic. And he had all these tools with him, the, the tools of the trade, which looked as though they were tools that had been used for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Yeah, but the thing is, he, he was talking about the fact that the tools that he uses now are the same tools that were used in prehistoric times. And yeah. Nothing's changed when it comes no. to working stone. No. But, um, but he, yeah, I mean, he sort of really brings the, the, the landscape alive. And we, you know, we've talked about him a couple of times, so I think we're, we're in danger of becoming fanboys here. <laughs> fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we've now got between us, I think we've got four copies of his book. Well, what else are we doing? Uh, we did um, a hidden Wiltshire walk with the museum crowd. Um, that was Earl Stoke Wood and Salisbury Plain. Um, well, we went up and we did a bit of... We went up through the woods. It's quite steep as well, though, when you go up onto the escarpment. And then went over to the, the sort of field where they filmed 1917 or part of it. Um, had a bit of a chewing about that and then headed back. I mean, it's very picturesque up there. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's lovely. It's it's really nice. You get views across to the Pusey Vale. Um, it's 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 just very very pleasant. So, Do you yeah, know, that I was good. I didn't realise until you because you wrote a blog about it afterwards, mm. um, and you dropped that clip of the opening scene of nineteen seventeen. Yeah, uh, I'd never noticed until then that the opening scenes were filmed by the lolly, lollipop tree. Yeah, as they well. were. So it begins and it ends at it the, does, yeah. the same place. That was a fascinating thing for me. When I went up the first time, um, it was last year before the lockdowns all started, um, I went to the this the actual specific trees that opened the film where they're leaning against the, he's leaning against the tree. Mm. And I held my phone up and got the, that opening clip up in front of me mm. and was able to perfectly match the scene. Just aligned it. Yeah. Just aligned it. So on my phone, I'm watching the film and then with my eyes, I'm looking up and seeing oh, the actual fantastic. vista that's in the... In the movie, it's fascinating. So, so that those those trees, this won't mean anything to anybody who hasn't been up there. But um, that was where, so where we were looking over to the lollipop tree yeah. out across the Imber Range. The, yeah. There was some trees uh, further on the field to our left. Yes, it's down down there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's down there. I thought we'd recognise that. Yeah, I think that the actual tree. I went back <laughs> recently. Well, not recently, a few months ago, <clears throat> and the actual tree that he was leaning against has, has become damaged. Um, it looks like it's been either been hit by lightning or it just rotted away and snapped off but mm. the actual tree at the start where he's leaning against it's, it's not quite intact anymore it's a bit of a shame yeah yeah actually because we didn't actually go out to the tree you can i mean it's because the the, the the danger area um, yeah the, the live firing area is is marked beyond the tree so you can walk out to the tree and it's sort of open access so you, you can walk up to it but um you know may, maybe Maybe too many people have been going up there to mooch around. I don't know. Yeah, <clears throat> but, but yeah, yeah no, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in two weeks' time, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, it was um, a terrific walk, and it's well worth um, doing a, a, a yeah. podcast on that one. Yeah. Um, you so, also did something on Nap Down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was kind of two new, sort of longer blogs, wasn't it? Two new walks that we yeah. put up: um, the, the, the Old Stoke Wood and Nap Down, which. Um, I think we're going to do a podcast on as well because that was that was a um, a long walk and I think I talked about it in the, the last podcast. Um, but yeah, that was a, 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 a terrific walk. Um, apart from the boring bit along the old um, Shaftesbury to Salisbury Road, um, and uh, funny enough, my op- optician lives in um, Broadchalk, um, so I went to see him. Actually, I had an appointment on Saturday. Um, with him, so he was going to scurry off and have a look at the uh, the, the, the walk. Um, but yeah, I was sort of you know, talking about nap down because I'd never heard of it before. And then of course you found that you'd taken some uh, some drone shots up there. Mm, yeah, and um, he obviously the optician had, had been up there, been up to, to, to nap down as well because he lives there. And um, I don't, but even the, you know, even though it's on the outskirts of, of um, Broadchalk. I don't think many of the locals got there either. Because, again, it's a bit of a... It's, it's not a bit of a trek, isn't it? It's a bit of a trek. Um, it's a little bit steep, but it's not that far. Um, and clearly people do go up there, because I said in the blog there were signs about you know, keeping your dog on a lead. Or yeah. It actually might even have said no dogs, I'm not sure. Um, so obviously people do go up there. 
But um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that more in a, in a, at some point. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, that's it, really. We're ready to talk about this week's topic, Beckhampton Gallops. So Beckhampton Gallops and, well, this is called, the, the blog post I put up about this is called Beckhampton Gallops and Witches Plantation, but actually, I looked at the map in preparation of the, for this this morning, and on the map it's called Witch Plantation, not Witches Plantation, so I need to change that on the website. Um, curiously named Witch Plantation. Um, yeah, I think I, I don't know where, I, I've, I've written Witches, or did you call it? Witches I call it witches okay. on the, the website. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, the the feed dropped out for a moment there, so I didn't hear what you said. But um, yeah, I think on the map, as you say, on the one to twenty five thousand, it's witch plantation, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, that was one of the things I was researching. I couldn't find any reference to no, witch plantation either. anywhere. <laughs> it's, almost, it's just a. It's a fairly big plantation as well. Actually, it's quite beech trees and mm. um, looks quite eerie. You know, yeah. a bit like Furs Knoll. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A little bit of mystery about it. But if I remember rightly, because I did that. I think I mentioned last time when we were talking about this that I'd done a variation of the walk that you did, mm. and um, and I carried on to Cheryl Monument and yeah. you know, Cowstone and down and all the rest of it, um, but I don't remember the plantation at all. Yeah, and it, I think it was is it as you were heading from the car park towards. I mean, we'll talk about this more in the direction of Cheryl um, Monument. It's down to your left. Is that right? Well, it's, it's it's on your way back. So on, uh, okay. on my route, I took I went over to the sort of outskirts of Cheryl Down, but didn't quite go over the top towards where the monument is. I, right. I then started to turn back on myself mm-hmm. and come back around the perimeter of the gallops, and it was just there. It's on the sort of um, east side of um, the National Trust land at Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's the rights to roam over it and everything. Yeah. Um, um, actually, I was I meant to write down the date because you, you you wrote a blog about it um and i meant to write down the dates it was um if people want to follow along it was it's july wasn't it um, yeah it was july and wrote july. it um but you know you, you can find it easy enough it is called beckhampton gallops and which plantation which is plantation isn't it yeah um but uh there's there's, there's there's a map you put a map at the bottom yeah but um yeah tell us about the walk well, before I get on the walk, I'm just going to talk about the gallops. Okay. Um, because this is, it's like a triangle of land um, west of Beckhampton roundabout. So Beckhampton is, you know, that roundabout on the A4 where you can go um, up to Avebury. Um, but or you go across to Silbury Hill. It's, it's, it's a sort of quite a, an important junction. Um, you can go in many different directions. But it's a triangle of land west of that roundabout Um that has a Roman road to the south, uh, the A4 to the north, and to the west is Cheryl Down. And it's a fairly big expanse of land, and um, most of it is owned... Some of it on the west side is owned by the National Trust, um, but a big chunk of the gallops is owned by um, a racehorse training um, person, Roger Charlton, um, Beckhampton Stables. So they train racehorses there, including quite a few of the Queen's horses. Um, And... Um, although there's, there are some rights of way around the perimeter, he does allow the public to walk on the land after midday, um, because in the mornings they're training the horses, but after midday he he basically says to the locals, you know, you're free to roam. Um, and are there he's s- very generous of him. Are there signs to that effect? Yes. Okay. So there's a car park just off the A4, yeah. um, which um, is quite a big car park, and there are signs there in terms at the entrance points onto the land that say, you know, this isn't pretty much says in a nutshell, this isn't public access land, but you are welcome to come on here after 12 o'clock. Um, but having said that, I did um, in the research, I found a news report in the um, Gazette and Herald last year um, where he was 
very tempted to start closing off the access because of oh, people no. disrespecting the land. God. Um, in lockdown, of course, what happened is a lot of people that wouldn't normally walk in the countryside went walking in the countryside, ignored the signs, would come onto the land before 12 um, with dogs off leads, upsetting the horses. And um, a couple of times, or at least one time, when he tried to sort of say to people, you need to, to leave this place, um, he got threatened with violence. <laughs> Which is terrible. And then, of course, you've got all the other issues of dog poo bags just dumped around, um, empty cans of beer, water bottles just left on the land, which um, is all very dangerous to the horses. Um, so, yeah, it's. I just despair when I hear about this because I think it's such it's such a generous thing for him to do to, to let people walk on quite a l- wide expanse of land, which is a beautiful place. Um and a minority screw it up for the rest of us. Yeah, and it's, you know, is it any one of the MOD also get, um, yeah. you know, a bit angsty about the whole access to Salisbury Plain thing? And yeah. again, during lockdown, people were abusing that. And, you know, I, I, you know me about sort of private land and all the rest of it. And yeah. at some point, it was common land. And But, you know, at the end of the day, when somebody's trying to make a living out of using that land i mean you know we should all res- respect it and yeah you know you don't go tramping around the farmer's crops what well, some people do uh, actually does remind me of the um uh, the sunflower field between shooting and tillshead i think i mentioned to you i saw people tramping yeah. around there and coming out with great armfuls of flowers the other day yeah so uh, that's somebody's crop that they're stealing uh anyway don't get me started on that one um but yeah just as you say people perhaps aren't used to walking in the countryside and I you know I mean what is there to understand I, I just don't I don't get it I don't understand why no I don't either I, I don't understand don't. why they don't understand <laughs> yeah I don't I don't either it's a mystery to me but um apparently some people would also complain that um when he would ask them to leave the land they'd say he had no right to do that <laughs> because and I was thinking well he has every right to do that mm. and he could quite easily block off access completely yeah. um yeah. but anyway that's my rant over. But um, I, I, I did notice when I did that walk, which was a few years ago, or a variation of it, and I parked in the same car park as you, and and and, and you know the, the 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 scourge of the, um, the 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 dog poo. I mean, all along that that path, along the top, yeah. along the old Bath Road. Uh, yeah, it was just everywhere. It was disgusting. It really was. Yeah. But I when I visited, um, I think it was in June. I visited as well. I. Went up to the car park and um, that quite a lot of the, the land on the gallops is, is actually farmed as well, so it's mm. arable. And um, a big chunk of it is farmed by Gultymore Farm from Beck, Beckhampton. And um, I think it was in June, um, I met the farmer up there and he opened up the gate and let me drive down onto the, the gallops because um, I was doing some drone filming of him driving his tractor around. Mm. Um, and that's what gave me the idea, really, to kind of go back and explore... Um, the area a bit more so that that sparked a seed so I came up with this route and um, I went back to the car park in July um, one evening actually it was when the 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 nights were very long and um, I thought there wouldn't be too many people around and I was absolutely right I didn't see a single soul Mm. on the walk that evening Um, so from the car park there's a a path footpath it's a right of way that takes you above the gallops along a, a ridgeway um I think it's part of the Wessex Ridgeway long distance path. Yeah, it um, is. It's um, that's absolutely what it is, which is in turn part of the old, if it exists. We've talked about this many a time. You know, the, the the Great Ridgeway or the Greater Ridgeway yeah. that goes from from the Wash to Lyme Regis, supposedly. So the Wessex Ridgeway is a section of that. Yeah, um, and I think our section, the Wessex Ridgeway, goes from. Oh wow! Where does it go? Um, Dorset to um, oh no, but that's right. It's Bath to to Marlborough. That stretch, I yeah, think, could well that, be that section. Yeah, and you're kind of parallel um, south of the A4, aren't you? The existing A4. Yes, you're following so, the road. Yeah. In fact, it's called on the map. It's called the Old Bath Road. I guess that must is, be yeah. the original road then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. But yeah, you you go through some woodland. Um, and come out the other side, and then you, you you've got this wonderful vista where you're looking across to Cheryl Down. You can see the Lansdowne Monument poking up in in the distance. Um, 
yes, yeah, you're just following that ridgeway along. It's a really nice, nice view. And, and as you're there, it is possible to drop down from the ridgeway onto the gallops and the, the fields around there. And again, it's, it's you've got this, you know, obviously you don't walk on the crop, the crops, but around the crops, there are multiple pathways to, to wander. Um, it's a very nice place. If I remember rightly, you get views off to your right to the north as well, don't you? Yes, you do. Sort of, you know, Windmill Hill and Avebury yep. di- direction. Yeah. Uh, so you yep. really are on top of a, a, a ridge there, which way there, with, with just, as the name suggests, you know, Wessex Ridgeway, with, with just huge sweeping views. Absolutely. And um, I remember once walking up there on a summer's evening and seeing the the combines down below cutting the crops that they harvest in the fields in the summer it was just really nice it's very wiltshire very rural scene i have to say yeah um but there is quite a bit of ancient history along here as well so along that ridge you've got an earthwork that stretches pretty much the whole length from the car park um all the way up to cheryl down and um at various points you can you can see it in the landscape fascinating um what do you know what that is because i i that's one of the things I was Googling yesterday. So in fact, uh, you, you get on the 1 to 25,000 map, you've got a tumulus marked, yeah. which is right by the um, the old Bath Road, you know, the, 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 old, the Wessex Ridgeway. So that yeah. seems to be just off to the right. Actually, no, I do remember that. I do remember seeing that tumulus. And then the earthworks are off to the left, aren't they? So yeah. north and south, respectively. Yeah. So do you know anything about the, the earthworks? I don't, what no, no. It's one of those things. Um, there's another earthwork down the south east part of the Gallops, which is called, on the map, it's called Hair Pit Way. Yeah. Um, and that's very visible as well. You can actually see it's like a track. So whether these are old tracks, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I meant to Google Hair, Hair Pit Way and I'm completely forgotten about that because that's written in because of all the old scripts, which I think indicates a sort of ancient monument on the... Yeah. OS maps. Um, so, I, do, do you know anything about that, Hair Pit Way? No, I don't. Well, we need to make some stuff up, don't we? So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have no idea what the earthworks are. We know what Hair Pit, Hair Pit Way is. So, we need, we need to invent something. <laughs> and then so, we- so, here we go. Here we go. I've just pulled it up. I'm talking okay. about improvisation. <laughs> Hair Pit Way linear boundary on historic England. Um, so, what does it say? It talks about ceremonial and ritual activity during the Neolithic and early Bronze Age periods. Right. Um, and if you look immediately to the west of Hare Pit Way on the map, there's um, a cluster of tumuli there as well. Yes. So um, there was something going on. Yeah, so the, 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 it talks about ditches and banks, um, which pretty much mark boundaries. So mm. um, who knows? Could have been marking the boundary between, you know, one tribe's piece of land and, and others. Mm. But you look at the, the, the earthworks by the Wessex Ridgeway, um, they're pretty extensive, aren't they? I mean, they go sort of just um, just west of the car park and they follow that yeah. old Bath Road, the Ridgeway, for, wow, I mean, it looks like a, a, a few kilometres. Uh, yeah. It just goes on and on until yeah. pretty much to... Um, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Down. Yeah, it must be at some kind of a Bronze Age boundary or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it looks like Hare Pit Way was an ancient track, and it was adopted in medieval times as a a proper trackway. Um, it's only very short, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's only a bit of it left. Yeah, I mean, it probably sort of went on before, uh, long before. Yeah. See, if we were proper professional podcasts, we'd have researched all this, and we'd know what the hell we were talking about. But why break the habit of lifetime? I know. <laughs> You're giving the impression that we wing it every week, Paul. <laughs> what, you mean we don't? <laughs> <laughs> but as, anyway, as you go along that path, um, it, it stretches for quite a way. Um, and eventually you, you, you'll you meet another... It's like a chalk path that's coming up the hill from the A4, um, heading up to Cheryl Down, and where you turn a left and, and sort of head past... Um, a waterboard underground reservoir. Um, And again, it's a tumulus around there. Mm. Um, Lots of tumuli around this space, so it was obviously important in the Bronze Age. Yeah, if you you look at your your map with the the 
trace of the path. I mean, it's just, again, it's one of these areas where it's littered with with monuments of some sort, earthworks, tumuli, and, of course, the um, <coughs> the Iron Age, or Bronze Age, and then Iron Age Hill Fort at, at um, Albury Camp. Um, yep. This, this, again, is a, 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 another very, very significant landscape um, in, in, in prehistory. Absolutely. Um so at, th- at this point, the path sort of verges into two. Um, if you head to the right, you're heading up to Cheryl Down to the boundaries of the, the Iron Age hill fort. Um, if you veer left, you're going to sort of follow the boundary line of um, a field system. Um, and the, the road is quite well marked here. And actually, I said I didn't see any people walking, but I did see a car flying along that road because um, it's an off-roader's mm, it's byway. road. It's a yeah. byway. Um, and actually, it was quite funny because as I was walking along, I thought the ruts in the road were really deep. I thought, God, I, there's no way on earth that's a, a car could make it up here. Um, it's just crazy, absolutely crazy to drive on, on a road in this state. Mm. And about 10 minutes later, I had to sort of step off the road as a Land Rover Discovery went flying past. And I watched it go up the hill into the distance and it, it managed to get through OK. Yeah, um, it's extraordinary what, uh, some of the terrain that these things will go through um, yeah and and you know my, my little car as well they just but it, you know incredible ground ground clearance yeah but having said that i mean you do see people try some extremely stupid things in in just ordinary road cars and uh, yeah and of course they then have to get hauled out yeah yeah bit bit of an aside but was back to sort of 1917 um because you know the the, the the pond and the where they built the um the French farmhouse for the for the film, um, mm. and 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 by that pond, and there was a, I think it was either two thousand and eighteen or two thousand and nineteen, uh, in that really sort of one of those harsh winters, with deep snow, and I've got a photograph of this. Somebody driven um, a Peugeot two hundred five out there, and it was they got to sort of by the pond there, and the ruts are, are really, really deep, but they did this, and it's bad enough in the summer, but in the middle of winter and snow, and there was this little Peugeot <laughs> abandoned um, in the middle of nowhere, and God alone knows how they got it out of there. I mean, the thing would have been a write-off because it was there for weeks. But you oh, think okay. the stupidity of people to try and take their cars in these, to these places, unless, of course, it was stolen and dumped, which is every, every yeah. likelihood. But, yeah. <clears throat> The one interesting thing here is um, if you kind of look back down the gallops, you can see there's a vista that opens up. You're looking down towards the roundabout, and in the distance you can see Silbury Hill. Um, Now, in this location, um, I've flown my drone here on two occasions. One was in the summer of 2018. It was really hot summer. Uh, We had weeks and weeks of no rain Mm. and severe heat through to the end of July, which totally dried up the landscape and made it go desert-like. It was brown. Um, And then when I went back this year, we'd had a lot of rain in May, um, and it it, it carried through into June, and the fields were bright green, really, really green, and lush colours, strong colours. So I put my drone up, and I'd managed to get the same shot three years apart from the same place and I've, I've put this on social media um so if you do a bit of look up some of my social media stuff you'll see it but i put the two photos side by side and the contrast was astonishing yeah. it's like deep greens versus browns and savannah like yeah. plains of the yeah. desert you know yeah it's you're amazing. i mean the, the, the photographs that you put with the um uh you know the block uh i just yeah, you know, stunning. I mean, they're, they're pretty much all uh, drone shots, aren't they? Apart from yeah. one or two, um, sort of at, obviously at ground level. Because I, I was I was looking at it, and you talked about the sort of looking out to Silbury Hill, and I I thought I, I, I don't remember getting that perspective when I did the walk. Yeah. And of course, you know, your drone would have been off, you know, not probably not from the the the, 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 the route of the walk. It was probably slightly to the east somewhere looking at this. Yeah, um, but yeah, they just you know if you, if if you haven't read Glenn's blog, go and have a look. These these photographs are stunning. <clears throat> yeah, and we'll come back to Silbury Hill in mm, a, in a yeah. minute when we talk about the Roman Road. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, you, when you were up there, you didn't go to the to Oldbury Camp. You didn't no, go to the the, the hill no. fort there. 
I headed down to Witch Plantation. Yeah. Um, so that's the byway that takes you down. Yeah. Um, and um, it kind of then, from Witch's Plantation, does a dog leg <coughs> around um, a boundary. But it does bring you down to the um, the Roman Road. Um, but, I mean, yeah, Witch Plantation, <coughs> no idea what it is, or what the history of it is, or how it got its name. Um but yeah, that's all on open access land, so you can go for a wander in there if you would like to. Yeah, it's right on the boundary, isn't it, of the open yeah. access, I think. it's um, So that track that you were on, um, coming from the direction of um, yeah. Gerald Down towards Witch Plantation. Um, I'm picking up your pronunciation. It's not plantation at all, it's plantation. Um, plantation for us and all those. But it, yeah, it's right, it's right on the... The border of the open access area, um, but I, I don't know. Is it? I, I guess we can talk about Albury Camp on another podcast. Do you think? Because I, I was sort of researching that yesterday and sort of reading up on it. I mean, again, sort of fascinating area, but it's just outside the the area of the, 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 of the walk. Yeah, yeah, we can cover that in mm. another podcast. But another option is. I mean, I found this following the byway was actually. I wouldn't say dull, but it was, you know what it's like when you're walking on a road. It's it's not always the greatest of places to walk. Um, mm. And I was thinking, as that land's open access, that if I was going to do this again, I'd probably just dive off the road and walk across the hillside and find my own route across um, to join the, the byway at the other end. Yeah. Um, well, so when I did it, um, as I said, I did a, you know, I hadn't seen your your roots um if i did i did it several years ago i mean probably f- at least five years ago so if, before you you put that walk together um so i did go over to actually walked along the wessex ridgeway i went up to cheryl monument had a sort of mooch around there and took, yeah. took in the views um the white horse um and then from there i just literally dropped down onto uh onto Cal- calstone down yeah um, which we've talked about before um and was the subject of another walk so i, f- I think i kind of like put two you know one and a half walks together if you like yeah um yeah there is another option to go to go up and skirt the outs the outskirts of um Albury camp <clears throat> yeah. and then drop down the wessex ridgeway to the roman road right by baltic farm um yeah. And then it extends the walk by a couple of miles, maybe yeah, by yeah. a mile or two. Yeah. yeah, but it's. I mean, it, it's well worth dropping down into. Um, we've talked about it before. You know, to Ranscombe Bottom from there. Yeah. So, you know, if you want, didn't want to do like the Calstone walk, which we've talked about before, um, I think, um, and you, know, you can do it from from this walk, you know, so from from Beckhampton, and then. Drop onto Rans- into Ranscombe Bottom, which is all open access. It's part of the same ac- yeah. open access that which plantation is in, um, and you can sort of you know cover all that area from there. But it's but again, the history there is just astonishing, really. And, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the fascinating thing for me was when I dropped down to the Roman Road. Um, Roman roads are great because they're very straight, um, and you get pretty good views from there so so it's almost like as i was looking west i could look directly across to morgan's hill yeah and see the radio towers on the top and um first mm. um i think there's a photo of that on the um yeah there is post yeah um so you can see that it's, it's really good and then looking back the other way so following the roman road in the other direction back towards beckhampton um the Pusey Downs open up to your right, and you get this fantastic wild view of the Wandsdyke snaking its way over the down. Yeah, um, it's just absolutely stunning. And in on a summer's evening, and as the light was falling, it was just perfect. Again, no people around at all. I had it to myself. It was wonderful. So the shot that you posted of that, uh, just going back to that now, um, that was that. That was another drone shot. No, that was taken with my camera at ground level okay um i thought i'd perhaps i 
seen it somewhere else. You did a, a, a drone shot of it. Oh yeah, it was the Morgan's Hill Furs Knoll yeah. shot. That's that's a drone yeah. shot on on the um, on the, the website. Um, and yeah, looking sort of along the Wandsdyke. Yeah, it's it's actually I don't know. It looks it, it's taken from an elevated position. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, I'm up on up on the yeah almost on a not on a ridge but high up yeah so you're then looking across as the it almost goes down into a valley yeah and then comes up the other side so you're looking um, across the roads the a yeah. three four five or five whatever it is from yeah. devices to avery you're looking yeah. across that and then in a way way over to you, as you say you can see the one sort of sneaking across the landscape up into the, the, the hills over by sort of tan hill and milk hill and, and yeah, in that yeah. direction um yeah, you know, once again, just in, in, incredible views. Amazing views. Uh, really, really rewarding views as and, you're walking there. And you can't walk, can you? You can't follow the Wandsdyke um, all the way across, I don't think. So if you were... Because, of course, the Wandsdyke passes Furs Knoll and Morgan's Hill, um, and it crosses that, that A road that I mentioned just now. Um, yeah. But I don't think you can can you continue to oh it's the a361 isn't it that road um, yeah you can't continue along the one cycle can you no you can oh uh, you can yeah, you yeah can. there's yeah. a public right away yeah yeah I'm just looking that's at that's actually the one cycle. you can actually walk it yeah. all the way yeah. down to walkers hill yeah yeah looking at that it. direction looking at it on the map now because of course we have walk, talked about having a, a hidden wiltshire walk that does that whole length through our, our region yeah, yeah. So the Roman Road, um, that was part of the, the London to Bath Road, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. So if you follow it back to Beck, Beckhampton, it's now a byway um, and um, takes you all the way down to the A361. And I think the other side of the A361, it stops being a right of way because it goes across um, arable land. Um, yeah, that's, the mark, the, that's what the I was on about. Yeah. yeah, but so you can't. So can you or can't you follow it all the way? No, you can't. Uh, right. I mean, it's marked on the map. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the location of it, but I, I'm fairly sure you can't walk that way across. Yeah, it's it's part of Goltymore Farms. Uh, field, okay, so. okay. So maybe in the winter you could um, wander across. But it's not a pub, public right of way. Not public right of way. Right. No. Okay. No. Um, but that takes you all the way to directly to Silbury Hill, um, uh, where, where oh, okay. it then joins the A4. Okay, sorry, I'm um, I'm, I'm mixing up Wandsdyke and the Roman Road. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the Wandsdyke. Let's just be clear here. So the Wandsdyke, you can follow all the way yes. um, across the A361, sort of in the east to west or west to east. But the Roman Road, as you say, it stops at the A361 at a place called Three Barrows. Yeah. Oh no, no, no! Nope. Oh, that's not the Roman Road either. No, nope, it's nope. Um, no. He just stops. It's not marked as anything. Yeah. Um, so you can see it. You can see the road, but it's not a puppet right of way. Yeah. Got it. So, but as you're walking along the Roman Road towards um, Beckhampton again, um, it kind of goes uphill, and then once you're over the crest of the hill, you get this tremendous view of the straight road pointing directly to Silbury Hill um, and again I put a photo on the, the blog of this um, where you see the Roman road just going straight as a die. Now the funny thing is that I the first time I did this I didn't have my proper camera with me, I just had my phone so I took a sort of low light condition photo of that Roman road leading to Silbury Hill and shoved it on Twitter um, just because I was so excited to share it, but it was a crap photo. <laughs> it was mm. awful. And, of course, that's out of all these wonderful photos I take, That's that crappy one is the one that went viral. <laughs> of course. Um, and um, I think it was um, the television guy, Neil Oliver. Uh, um, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> he's, he picked it up and retweeted it, and he ended up, he follows me on Twitter now, but um, that all of his followers lapped it up, and it was... And the funny thing is, I kept getting a lot of people saying um, on that tweet then, but is it a Roman road? Because they were sort of contesting that Roman roads were actually built on top of existing Celtic trackways. Yeah. 
Which is entirely plausible. Yeah. Um, but um, I think the Romans industrialised it and straightened them all. Um, but it could well be a, a, even older than, than Roman. Um, but you wonder, because when I was looking at that photograph, I think, what, why why would a Roman road go to an ancient monument like that, to, to yeah. Silbury Hill? Yeah. Um, I'm not saying they would go round it. In fact, no, the Romans, they just plough plow through it if they could. Um, but, you know, what, 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 what made them build the road there? Unless, as you say, they had just built their road over an old ancient Celtic track. Yes. Which did deliberately go to Silbury Hill. It may well done. I mean, you've got, as you go further past Silbury Hill, of course, you're heading up to the, the old Ridgeway, mm. um, which we know is very old trackway. Yeah. Um, and some of these things, they could have all linked up. Um, but it, it's plausible to think that, you know, there was a road, a trackway going past Silbury Hill over towards Bath for thousands of years because Bath, as we know, before the Romans, was a... Uh, venerated site by the Celts you know they mm. had um, you know they worshipped their own god mm. um, at the spring Sulis um, so you know all of these and the funny thing is I'm reading a, a fantastic book at the moment um, by um, oh, I need to get it hang on oh he's back here he is he's got his book yeah so I've got this fantastic book I'm reading at the moment by um, Francis Pryor um, oh you yeah see it um, scenes from prehistoric life and he's really because he's an archaeologist he was a guy that was on time team oh that's um, it i was trying to think where i knew the name yeah and he's, he's he's well he writes very readable books but he's 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 writing about um the people of the prehistoric times and and using his knowledge of archaeology over the years to really wrap a, some suggestions about how they lived and he was very much of the the fact that in prehistoric times um people were really well connected with these trackways, with the culture, um, with, you know, they, they were all communicating with each other, they were trading with each other, um, and much more sophisticated than we give them credit for. Just because they haven't written stuff down doesn't mean that they weren't mm. sophisticated cultures. Um, and, and I think we have, a, well, I certainly have had a tendency of thinking that, you know, the Romans civilised Britain, but actually no. it's probably not true. No. Um, we were civilised way before Abs the Romans came here. Absolutely. But in a different way. I was, um, when I was looking into um, Beckhampton, um, and sort of just, just sort of researching the history of that, and uh, and it, uh, again, it, it's somewhere that was mentioned in the Doomsday, Doomsday Survey, uh, but I found an old map, a really old map. It's quite a crude map, and I think it was from, if I remember rightly, the 17th century. And obviously, you know, Avery was 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 marked um and if you can picture sort of abri at the top of the map sort of in the middle and then we've got the avenue which comes uh which still exists that comes away from abri and heads down to what is now the a4 and towards mm. um uh is it west kennet um that, that sort of direction um so you've got that sort of avenue but there's this this, this map suggests that there was another avenue equally as important with with many um, standing stones that ran to the west of Silbury Hill. So um, I don't know, explain this very well. So you've got Avery at the top and then what I didn't say was at the south, you know, in the middle, the bottom of the map was Silbury Hill. So they were centred. Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, I haven't got the map in front of me now, but I don't, I don't think they actually in reality are. But on this ancient map, you know, in the middle at the top, Avery in the middle of the bottom, Silbury, the avenue that still exists to the right, to the east, in a sort of uh, a curved shape, um, and then swinging round to uh, Silbury, and then there was another one. It suggests to the e to the west, to the left of Silbury Hill, and sort of swinging round to to, to meet at Silbury Hill, um, mm. because there are still two stones that people sort of um, suggested were part of what was called Beckhampton Avenue. I think the, the, the stones, I think they're called the tall stones. And there's Adam, mm. Adam yeah. and Eve. Adam and Eve. Yeah. I think Adam is still visible. I'm not sure that Eve is still there or is, is very much um, eroded. Um, so I don't know if there's any truth in that. And this sort of other, this, this second avenue that doesn't, doesn't, you know, isn't really visible in the landscape anymore. Yeah. Um, but, but clearly, Silbury Hill, you know, as we all know, was was very important um, at, at, 
those times when they built Avebury. Um, I mean, I don't know in terms of chronology, did Silbury Hill become come before or after Avebury in terms of a timeline? Um, don't know. We'd have to check that. Yeah. Put it in the notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, see again if we were doing our job we'd, we'd have looked that up <laughs> but um, yeah yeah. This, this, this ancient map it, it, it all appears to, to, to sort of connect up but um, you know bearing in mind this is the 17th century and they didn't have Google but um, yeah fascinating landscape full of prehistory um I think the, the the Roman road, I, I, I guess, must have been built on something that already existed. Otherwise, why would it go to Silbury? Yeah. Um, right. So, just going back to you found it isn't, isn't Google great? Yeah. Um, you, you've not come to a hidden Wiltshire uh, <laughs> blog, have you? <laughs> <We've searched. laughs> hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> um, the earliest. Earthworks at Avebury date between 3,400 and 2,625 BC. Yeah. And um, Silbury was later, 2,400 okay. BC. So the avenues, I wonder if the, the two avenues, um, did they come after Avebury or at the same time? So in that 800-year period yeah. or wherever it was, you know, I guess they built the avenue or maybe the avenue, avenue predated it, I don't know. So maybe Silbury Hill was some of any a, a significant site before they built the mound. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, West Kennet Longbarrow, that means West Kennet Longbarrow was there for around a thousand years before they built Silbury Hill. Right. Um, so this is the thing: is it's very tempting in our minds to think of all this stuff as being contemporaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you have Avery, you have Silbury Hill, yeah. and you you have the Longbarrow, but actually. It's about a thousand years separate them. <laughs> it's a thousand years separate yeah. them. There's, there's a huge amount of history in this landscape. So the, the people that lived here. So the avenue that we all know and love, oh, and oh, know and love from Avebury South, you know, I guess would have led to yeah. West Kennet. Yeah. And then for some reason they plonked Silbury Hill um, along the line. Yeah, but Silbury Hill's are interesting because it's. Again, it makes me wonder whether it's been strategically placed because if you walk mm. down the ridgeway and look across to the Silbury Hill direction, you, you can just make out the top of Silbury Hill mm. sitting in a valley and it looks like a long barrow. Yeah. But it follows you as you walk. As you walk along, it's like this barrow is following you. Mm. It's as if it was designed to be seen from the ridgeway. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Or some sort of crude, ancient, not crude because it's a, 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 a work of a great engineering feat, but... Um, you know, a navigational be- beacon. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you can see it, because you're not going to be able to see ground level from up there um, no. as you come over the, you know, the the crest of the hill. Um, so maybe that was, you know, people, maybe did they bring their dead along the ridgeway and yeah. um, towards the, you know, the, the barrow at West Kennet? Um, in fact, there's, an, there's another question for another time, I guess, was how many... Um, you know, how many people were buried in West Kennet Longbarrow? Was it just one person? No, it was many people and mm. um, many generations. Mm. So, because they, they would they would move the bones mm. um, to fit more people in. So it's yeah. again, it's probably beyond the scope of this podcast. But yeah. um, there's a there's a f- interesting history, and it, the, the question I have in my mind is for what period, how long was a long barrow used before it was closed off. Yeah. So we'll save that one for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we need to get number, somebody on who knows what they're talking about. Exactly. I wonder if David Dawson's listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be horrified. <laughs> yeah, we need to get him on, actually. We do, so, we do. Uh, we can set the record straight on some of these things. Yeah. Okay, right. but anyway, the, from the Roman road, um, there are mel- m- a few ways along the fence where you can clamber over. There are sort of bits of wood making little styles, so you can clamber over back onto the gallops and make your way back to the car park, wherever you like. It's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a freedom to do, you know, get the, the best way back that you can find. Um, and that's the, the walk over. I mean, hopefully it's given a flavour of um, the amount of history in the landscape. I mean, I talk, we talked at the start about landscape archaeology. Mm. If you want to get into that, this is a good place to start. Yeah, yeah. 
the um I, I know you sort of did it well you wrote the blog in july i'm not quite sure when you did the walk similar time i guess but um it when i did it it was um i remember it being very very cold uh must have been the winter at some point and this incredible storm came in it was it was a hail, a hail storm um so as i approached the gallops from the sort of southwest heading back up to that car park um the hailstorm was sitting over the, the the knoll, the wooded knoll up by the car mm. park, and it was kind of working its way towards me. And I took some black and white photographs as it was sort of sweeping down. And my God, it was dramatic. It, I, I might post one of those up on the the um, the Facebook page. Yeah, uh, and it was just biblical. And I can remember sort of trying to find some shelter somewhere from these hailstones, which was sort of trying to bury themselves in my skull. Uh, but God, it was cold. But uh, yeah, I mean, don't don't dismiss the walk for, for the winter because it's it's very yeah, this, very dramatic. Yeah, and the, and the pathways are pretty good as well, mm. so they wouldn't get too muddy. No, um, I don't. so in the winter it would be um, the good walk. To yeah, I, I don't remember there being too much mud, but uh, no, it's a fantastic walk. Okay, right. should we wrap up? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's there's one more Wiltshire Museum walk left, isn't there, uh, for this this year? Um, there is um, on Sunday we're doing Devils Den and Fifield Down, which will be the last one. Is it? Um, is it this Sunday? It is this Sunday. Yeah. Oh, dear. Sunday the twelfth. <laughs> I need, need um, some, I'm doing speed watch. Um, oh. Well, get your priorities right, Paul. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's... but actually, don't worry. I mean, this one is sold out. I think there's a lot of interest in this one. Right. Right. Um, so, um, if anyone's listening and would like to come, I think it's. Um, Unless someone cancels at the last minute, it's going to be hard to get a ticket. Mm. Um, but yeah, this will be the last one for this year. I'm planning on doing some, maybe some more organised walks in the autumn and winter. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. We, they've, they've been um, pretty popular, haven't they? So we should keep them. They going. have been, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue it on. It's been I've quite enjoyed doing it. I've enjoyed meeting new people mm. and people coming along who follow the website and listen to the podcast. Good to meet those people. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 interesting when you sort of do the plot the walks and they're not they're not very long walks um but they always take much longer than yeah i think i mean your your your, your, your wife has said a couple of times um that you know you never allow enough time but it's it's not a problem is it because people it, it's a very social thing and people like to yeah. chat and we, we stop and we've admired we take the our time. yeah yeah we do i mean it's funny because when i when i chose the routes i thought we'll easily do this in two hours mm. and then sort of three and a half to four That's hours right, later yeah. we're still <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because everyone else keeps chatting and stopping and then and we do talk we we talk point things out um, if david from the museum's along he'll usually have a box of tricks that he's yeah, brought from yeah, the archive yeah um, and of course if we do do them during the winter we'll have to adopt what Stu and i do when we do our walks together we would take a, a hip flask with a wee dram in it so <laughs> it takes even longer then <laughs> yeah, yeah um so Next episode, we think it's probably going to be the Earl Stoke Wood and the Lollipop Tree walk. Yep. Um, uh, what else? Thanks to Steve again, Steve Dixon. So the music in the middle, um, we which it's called the Borrowed Hand. Um, of course, his agreement that we can we that, that's probably the most appropriate one. Um, see, see what you think, um, or tell us what you think. It, yeah. just, it, it reminded me of horses hooves that's why i sort of thought yeah. that because there's a like a tabler steve's paying a, 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 a tabler um in it yeah. sort of we'll have to get to, we'll have to gather steve all the stuff we've put on of steve's music we should gather that up and um put it on the online do shop it, yeah we? do it as a playlist well i am doing yeah. it i've got it all in um yeah. whatever the apple tunes is so i've got it as a playlist on there um so yeah, we should, uh, and and again, Steve's agreed to that. You know, if we sort of charge a fiver for it or something, yeah, um, to line his pockets because he's you know he's doing all this for free. Um, so thanks, Steve, for that. Um, lower boots, bless them, still going. The discount, twenty percent discount. Um, lower dot co dot uk hw twenty for your twenty percent discount. Um, and the website for the show notes links um and of course the online shop yeah which um helps me keep my lights on um so yeah. thanks to everyone that's bought stuff through the shop it's really appreciated yeah absolutely um and 
We'll be doing a revamp of the shop actually between now and Christmas, so keep your eyes peeled. Ooh, um, sounds exciting. Yeah. But yeah, so we will be back in um, two weeks' time. Let's mm. talk about Earl Stoke Wood yep. and the lollipop tree. Until then, thanks for listening and goodbye. Ta-da. <laughs>